Hello, welcome to week four of uh, Philosophy 130. I um, hope you guys are doing well this week. We're, this is going to be a short lecture just to start us off. It's not even a lecture, it's really just more of a, um, some announcements and discussion of what we're doing. Uh, so um, the later lecture when I'm going to talk about God and gods and who they are and what they are, uh, that's going to come later this week. We're going to talk about the writing project or the, the first write project for philosophy. Um, I, there's some confusion over when it's due or what's uh, happening with it. But I think that confusion is largely because people have not really read the assignment. They just saw that there's this thing there and they got panicked and that it was due last night at 11.59. Um, but the, the due date is clearly uh, not for a couple weeks. We're going to talk about that. Uh, before we get going, a couple of things. One, the Philosophy Cafe uh, has been going great. We've had a couple of meetings and a couple of people uh, and uh, four or five people joining us in each meeting, six, I think, in the last one. So that's great. Uh, and it's been a great conversation. We're going to move the time for the Philosophy Cafe back to 3.30 just to allow for a couple of other people who wanted to attend have not been able to. So um, join us if you have the time. 3.30 on Thursday, we're going to be talking about new ideas and big ideas. I want to um, spend a couple minutes uh, before we get going on the project talking about um, a really uh, important loss for us as a people. Um, I think for all people, uh, particularly people who um, identify as women. Um, and uh, so, uh, um, but also I think for everybody because Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a uh, dominant voice in our society for equality, for women, for workers. Um, she was an important figure in our society and we lost her this past weekend uh, she passed away um, from cancer she served for a very long time on the Supreme Court and we owe her a debt of gratitude no matter if you are liberal or conservative Republican or Democrat uh, Ginsburg played an important role um, both as a justice and before that as a legal ad advocate um, so I, I'm sharing this meme. Um, so that's the dissenters hope that they are writing not for today, but for tomorrow. And I think that's a, an important philosophical con concept since we are uh, talking this week, particularly about a, a philosophical argument, um, learning how one goes about arguing um, is an important skill. And I don't know that we can have a better model than what uh, Justice Ginsburg did in her dissents and her comments in, on the Supreme Court. It's a sad day. Um, she was a powerful figure and, a, and an inspiration to many people. If you don't know much about her, uh, I, re I recommend you go track some stuff down about her. Find out what she did um, for us as a people, as a nation, uh, what she did to preserve rights across the nation. There's a great movie called Notorious RBG, uh, worth checking out. It's funny and entertaining, um, but also lets you know what kinds of things she did to change this nation. And on the webpage, I've um, posted this as well. Uh, you know, I'm, um, I think it's important if you are a US citizen that you exercise your rights and that you practice your responsibilities. Uh, one of those uh, rights and responsibilities is the right to vote. Um, if you are of age and you are a citizen, you should be voting. Um, and I'm saying this uh, in a nonpartisan way. Clearly I've shown my partisanship, but you know where I stand, but I think you should be voting. Um, and the, you know, the, the death of Justice Ginsburg is one of those moments where we recognize our power as a people. Because when you vote, you are voting 
for the person who will name, particularly for the presidential race, you are voting for the person who will name the next Supreme Court justice. Maybe not this election. We don't know what's going to happen in the next couple months. But you are you are voting for a person who has that power. And if you look at the power that uh, Supreme Court Ruth Bader Ginsburg had, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, if you look at the power that she had over the past 30 years, you recognize that's an awesome amount of power. I encourage you to vote. And so I've posted this link uh, because this is not a partisan move. I don't care who you vote for. I think it's important as a an educated citizen that you engage, that you take out up this responsibility. I've, I've included this link that will take you to the Michigan State Voter Information Center. And this is run by the Secretary of State's office. So there's, it's a legitimate site. There's a lot of important information here. And you can find out uh, where is your, who's your clerk, where are you, are you registered, what's on the ballot. You can, actually, you can interview your information here, no worries, because Michigan State already has all your information. Uh, you can also find out how do you go about registering to vote and whether what you can do to make sure you can vote. How do you do absentee ballot ballots? How do you vote at home? A lot of important information here. If you are not registered, you need to get registered if you want to vote. And, and it's your responsibility as a citizen to vote. You may say, I don't know anything about election, uh, politics. I don't know anything about who I want to vote for. It's your responsibility to find out. You exist in the world. Your life is changed by the people you vote for. I mean, just think about it this way. I don't want to lecture you lecture too long on this. Just think about this. You are a college student. The person you vote for, for president, for rep, uh, senator, for representative, those people have a direct impact on the amount of money you're paying for college. When you vote, you are voting for how much you pay for college. Now, that those people don't decide that thing that on their own, but you can certainly impact the way that discussion is had. And not just college, you can impact the, the effect of clean water, you can affect, uh, vote for social security, you can vote for the next Supreme Court justice. When you vote, you vote for things that affect your life. Register to vote. Even, even if you don't think you'll vote, even if you decide ultimately you don't know what to do and you don't want to vote, register anyway, because you don't want to come down to the day before the election and say, oh, I wish I really, I really wish I had voted. If you register, you can still just pop in the car and go over to the polling place and, re and vote. Okay. Let's go down to the first project. So as part of the work for this course, you have to create a couple of projects. Uh, generally, those projects take the form of academic essays, and you can do that if you'd like. Um, but I'm going to give you some options here for expanding what you could produce for this project. So let's um, let I'm going to read the assignment to you, um, and then we'll talk. I can talk about it as I read it, uh, just to to make sure that you understand what's going on. To make sure it's coming out of my voice, you can hear what I want to talk about within this assignment. Here it goes: sharing philosophy. There's a mode of philosophy that takes as its primary function the sharing of philosophy. That is, there are a number of philosophers who read, study, and write about philosophy with the sole goal of learning and sharing what other philosophers have said. Now clearly, those philosophers, philosophers have their own ideas and particular interests, but lar they largely just use those ideas to help focus their study and their teaching of philosophy. So there is this, this whole tradition of people who simply read and study philosophy and then write about what they've read and studied. They don't, they don't try to formulate their own arguments. For our first major assignment for this course, we're going to practice that study and sharing kind of philosophy. In order to do this assignment, you will select the philosophy, select an audience, 
and then reinvent the philosophy for that audience. Your first task will be to select one of our readings. You may not do one of the videos that we've done for the assignment, so you can't do um, Amru's uh, video about physics and gender identity. Um, you have to do one of the readings, and then you're going to read it frontwards, backwards, right side up, upside down. You should select a reading you basically understand and one that has a philosophy you care about. And that you can like it or hate it, you just care about it. Uh, you can having a strong feeling about the work that you're going to talk about will help you care about how you present it. So get to know the philosophy deeply, not in a spark notes way, but in a way that the expert gets to know a garden or a car engine. You examine it, you dig deep, you take it apart, you put it back together, you learn how it works. If you look at a gardener who spends a whole lot of time cultivating a garden, they are there and they know every inch of that garden. After you get to know the philosophy, I want you to consider an audience with whom you'd like to share it. Who needs to know that philosophy? Why do they need to know it? What seems most important for them to learn about? How will they best learn it? How will they react to it? Your audience should be specific and limited. You should know things about them. You should be able to have contact with them. In other words, the Democratic and jo Party and Joe Biden would not be an audience for you. You can't write to all Americans. You can't write to all college students. Find a particular audience you want to reinvent this philosophy for and then, and then focus on that. Finally, after you figure out your audience, consider how you might share the philosophy what mode of sharing would help your audience understand the philosophy in the way that you want them to understand it? Will they read an essay? Would a documentary film help them? Should you write a series of blogs, create a game, write a dialogue, build a website? How are you going to mix your way of sharing things with your audience's needs and the philosopher's ideas to create a moment of sharing? So the idea there is that you can think about all different kinds of modes and genres that you might be comfortable with. You don't have to write an essay. Certainly you could write an essay, but you could write um, a, a screenplay. Maybe not a real long one because you don't have that much time. You could produce a film. You could create a, uh, a mural. I'm not sure what you want to do. I'm not sure what your skills are, but think about that and think about how you want to present this philosophy. In order to do this assignment, you will need to meet the following requirements with the understanding that you're going to be graded on these requirements. One, show that you have a deep understanding of one of our readings through your reinvention of that reading in a new medium. Two, create work for a specific audience within a specific genre. Three, present work that shows effort, care, and academic integrity. Four, if your philosophy, your audience, and your genre is not clear, or if your work does not show academic integrity, be prepared to defend your work in a conference with me. So if I don't know what you're trying to do, I don't want to just say this is not a passing paper or a passing uh, project. I want to talk with you, and I want you to be able to defend it for, with me. Uh, number five, post your work in a... Uh, Post, post your work in a pre-due date workshop on 10-5, October 5th. We may have to figure out how to share work if we have people working in different genres that are different, to, difficult to share. So you're gonna work, post your work, uh, some sample of your work or something that you're working on by October 5th so that we can see what it is that you're working on so we can talk about what you're working on. And then on, uh, October 19th, you're going to post the official uh, thing that you want me to grade into the system. Okay, that's the project. It's not that difficult as far as something to think about. It's difficult as something to pull off. You're going to have to put some work into it and some effort and some thinking, but actually trying to conceive of what the assignment is, is not all that hard. I hope that's helpful for you. Let me know if you've got questions posted in the class notes section um, or, uh, or contact me um, and we can talk about it more one-on-one. -on -one. Hope you're doing well. I will see you later this week when we're going to talk about God. Register to vote.